claiming he's a Christian, look at his fruits. Look at the fruits. Both Bush and Kerry are Skull and Bones men, fraternity brothers. They've both been in Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones was a secret society that came over to the United States from Germany. It's got Naziistic, socialistic roots. They take loyalty oaths to Lucifer. George Bush never recanted. That should have every Christian's eyebrows out there upraising off their heads. He's never recanted. He took a oil, a lo, a lo, oh, yeah, an oath of loyalty to Lucifer, okay? Never recanted. That should tell you something. Hitler quoted scripture the whole time he was in power. Bush's speech, ma speech masters, speech writers do the same thing. He throws in terms, faith, prayers, born again. To them, born again is being born again into Lucifer, which is that whole coffin ritual the skull and bones have. Uh, their faith is in Lucifer. It's not the most high God. Their God is Lucifer. He can say God. He can say God of light. He can say anything once. The Masons have all their own terminology, and it mimics Christianity. If you've been deceived into believing all this time that George Bush is a Christian, you are a candidate to be deceived that the Antichrist is the God of the world. And if that's how close it is, that's how good it is, because if you can't see that Bush is a Satanist, that he is, he is a... Uh, stomping on the Bible. He's not a Bible, born again Bible believer, Bible stomper. He's stomping on the Bible. Okay? And when he's, when you get to where he's at, they've done spit on the Bible and trashed it and everything else. So with this whole debate with Bush and Kerry, we really don't have a choice. They're both skull and bones men. And what they're doing, Kerry with his cat and mouse thing, oh, you know what? I don't, you know, he, he, he had some good points against Bush's foreign policy, but it's not too hard to figure that out and to tear that apart. And, you know, he was telling them that we need more restrictions here in America. We need a Patriot Act, too. We need home, more homeland security. So that's telling you right there, Bush is keeping the agenda alive. He's protecting the New World Order agenda to get America into, an, into, an, uh, uh, into a dictatorship under control. He's protecting that part. What he's doing is just blind blasting Bush on everything else because what they are is Kerry is in faction two. Bush is in faction one. Kerry is the back pocket of the queen of the U.K., Bush is the back pocket of the Rockefellers franchise here in America. Carries under the Rothschilds. We got Faction 1 and Faction 2. You remember the anthrax attacks a couple years ago flying between the two parties, trying to kill each other off and threaten each other and warn each other. We have a new world order based on agenda. But what we have is factions behind the scenes fighting against each other to see who gets to control it. The U.K. wants control. The United States wants control. And no one's even looking at the other factor coming through the back doors, the Russians, the Chinese, the aliens are running it all. Lucifer's up there pulling everybody's strings, telling everybody one thing and doing another, pitting all these groups against each other. He doesn't care who does it. He's just going to come in and take over the reins as it is. So he doesn't care who are the ones who gets into power as long as he gets to power. And we know he's coming to power for 42 months. That's decreed. He gets to rule the world for 42 months. The New World Order agenda is how he'll do it. It gets, brings the whole world under one unified government, and that's what he'll take the reins of. So in the interim... We have the U.K. and the U.S.A. fighting against each other to be the ones to be, have bragging rights, I guess, uh, to bring Lucifer to power. Another thing is that uh, uh, the A.C., okay, the Antichrist, when he comes, he is going to be the master coder of Scripture. And if he hasn't figured it out now and all the speech writing and all these Republicans... Yes, the Antichrist could be from the United States, and I've, I've stated it in articles before. Uh, people don't understand that the last, the last day's terminology in the Bible, we have the people of Israel, we have the land of Israel, we have old Babylon, we have new Babylon. You know, if you really want to understand last day's events, get out of the church gurus, get away from them, get away from the church dumb crowd. They've all got you looking towards the U.K., they've all got you looking everywhere, but where you need to look. There's over a hundred requirements for the last day's Babylon, and the United States fits every one of them. The Vatican is not uh, the beast. Everyone thinks the Pope is the beast, the seven hills that Rome sits on. Well, you have to understand that in Revelation, the term mountains and hills is also return, uh, terms for governments and alliances. So you can't say just because of that one factor in Revelation 17 that the, the Pope is the beast. Now, what, what happens with the Pope? Yeah, the Pope is a beast. He's a secondary beast. He's another beast. He's not the main one. He's a front man. Actually, what it is is the Vatican is Satan's seat. Satan is ruling the world right now from the Vatican, behind the scenes. He's not the Pope himself right now. What he does is he pulls the strings. We all know the front men don't have the real power and control. It's the people behind them. And behind the Pope is, is a position in office called the Black Pope. doesn't mean it's a racial thing. It has nothing to do with color, skin, color of skin at all. It's a position called the Black Pope, 
And who the black pope is is the top Jesuit general. And that, that person holds the position of black pope, and Lucifer, of course, pulls his strings. And once you get into studying that, the Pope pretty much plays everybody's sides because it's Lucifer again. He's back there behind the Pope playing everybody's sides. So one minute the Pope will look like he's in alliance with the United States, and the other minute he looks like he's in alliance with the, with the UK. Okay? Uh, before I get into what I wanted to do tonight was talk about Nasera and talk about the Antichrist political agenda when he comes to Earth, is uh, answer a couple of questions from the, mail bot, from the mailbag, email bag. One of them is, is there a good Enoch study commentary? I really don't know about commentaries out there. I have the book of Enoch that you can read the entire books on both of my websites, sherryshriner.com and thewatcherfiles.com. You can go to either one of those sites and read the whole book of Enoch. Uh, another question is, uh, why does Enoch say the angels will not come down and lay with women again? And Enoch 8 and 10 mentions that uh, the angels couldn't come down and lay with women again. That part, you know, back in Noah's day, was when the angels were coming down and they looked upon women and saw they were fair and they were raping them and producing children with them. They were taking whoever they wanted. That was possible. The women were then giving birth to giants. And that became known as uh, the Nephilim. These were the hybrid children. These are what are demons today because they were born with human souls. Uh, but they were, ha you know, they were hybrids. The Lord let them roam the earth. So they're not aliens. These spirits of the Nephilim, are, you know, the dead children, they're called demons. Aliens never lost their bodies, so they don't need, you know, to possess bodies. They have their own bodies. They're grotesque looking. They, they can look like lizards or snakes or, uh, you know, there's over a hundred different kinds of brands, I guess you could call them, of different species that they might look like. And then you have the Watcher's Rebellion, the one Enoch speaks about, where they're giants. They're seven, eight, you know, nine feet tall. They didn't lose their looks. They look humanoid. Most of them have six fingers, six toes. Uh, but the fact being, was, we're going to go back to the Enki, which is Satan's brand, Lucifer's whole group, where they lost their angelic looks, they lost uh, any kind of humanoid-looking features. This is the whole group of uh, an Enki called the Enki. And this Enki group is the one that's coming down now, and they can take women's eggs, eggs from women. You'll, you'll hear about this in abductions all the time. And they, they, they take their eggs, and they mix them with their own sperm, and they can produce their own hybrids. And what they'll do is, is they'll take a woman's eggs, mix their whatever with it, and incubate a woman. A woman will be a carrier for about 8 to 12 weeks. They'll take it out of the woman. They'll put it into one of their own homegrown incubators. And they can make their own races that way. They can't do it the normal way, reproduction way. But they can do, uh, I guess you'd call it uh, in, in, whatever, uh, in vitro fertilization, something like that, along those lines. Think of it that way and grow their own, I guess you could say, or manufacture their own that way. So, yeah, human women no longer give birth to these aliens, but they're being done in test tubes and in incubators. So it's, it's being done. It's just, you know, the convenient route was taken away from them. Uh, okay, back to the political agenda of the beast. I wanted to get involved with this. For the last couple of weeks I've been sidetracked. Last week's interview with Zeff went very well. And it was amazing the persecution that resulted from it. Zeph was knocked out of his computer for a good week. Uh, he suffered a lot of attacks for it. Uh, the persecution online against me personally has really risen up because of it. We're hitting nerve spots. People don't want, the government doesn't want, the aliens don't want, the military doesn't want, the, you know, the whole shadow government, shadow side of our, you know, operations of things don't want this information coming out. You know, they've, they've been under secrecy for all these years. And the Lord is blowing the lid off the secrecy. And so what we're doing is we're coming out with this information. A lot of it we're not even coming out with. We're just renewing it, rehashing it, because it's been out there all along. It's just been buried. And that's what they tend to do. If they can't attack the message, they'll attack the messengers. So, you know, they'll try to discredit the information. If they can't do that, they'll come after the people themselves and try to discredit them. And that's basically what we're saying. I mean, Zeph, you know, we're not going to lay down. We're not going to, you know, when I get pushed, I push back. And we're going to be doing more interviews. We're going to be coming out with more and more information. I heard Zeph say on a site the other day, one of his Z Channel interviews, that he's going to go out and get video of these bases for people to see. So we're not laying down. No, we're standing up. We're busy. We're going to expose this evil of the New World Order so that if anything, if one person's eyes can be opened, a 100 people, a 1,000 across this nation, Christian.